Okay, so we're going to go through a couple example problems on conversion factors and temp including temperature conversion as well as a density problem. Okay, our first problem asks us how many milliliters are there in 2.09 cubic inches. So we are going to start by writing our known, which is 2.09 cubic inches. And the first thing we're going to need to do is to extend our line and figure out what our conversion factor is, which is going to go um, above or below the line. So we know that one milliliter is equal to 0 0.061 cubic inches. Because we want to get rid of cubic inches, we're going to put that on the bottom. So 0 0.061 inches cubed, so that our units cancel, is equivalent to one milliliter. Um, we do want our answer in milliliters at the end. So when you multiply, um, you do 2.09 times 1, which is 2.09, and then divide by the bottom, which is 0 0.061. When you put this into your calculator, you wind up getting 34.2 um, now I need to go back and double check my sig figs and make sure that those are correct. So I notice that um, the number I'm given in my problem has three significant figures, so therefore my answer has to have three significant figures. So I'm going to count from the left, one, two, three, and draw a line. And then I look to my six and it says that I need to round up. So my answer is 34.3 milliliters. All right, in our next problem, we are asked how many milliliters of children's Motrin, which has a concentration of 100 milligrams of ibuprofen per five milliliters of liquid, are needed to give a child a dose of 160 milligrams. So I'm gonna go ahead and start by writing my known, um, or writing, excuse me, what I'm trying to find, which is 160 milligrams. This is what I would like to know. Um, my conversion factor, is the concentration, which is 100 milligrams per five milliliters. That is my conversion factor. So I need to make sure that milligrams is on the bottom because I would like it to cancel. So I'll put 100 milligrams on the bottom and five milliliters on the top. So that's my dosage. I know that every five milliliters is gonna have 100 milligrams in it. So when I do this problem, my milligrams will cancel and I'll be left with milliliters, which is exactly what the problem asked me for. So 160 um, times five and then divided by 100 gives us eight milliliters. Now it's time to go back and double check my sig figs. Because we have a multiplication problem, I am looking for the same number of sig figs as the least in the problem. And um, that is five milliliters, which has one sig fig. So my answer should also have one significant figure. Here we have a density problem. We are told that a gem has a mass of 45 grams. So M is equal to 45 grams. When it's placed into a graduated cylinder containing 21 milliliters of water, the level of water rises to 34 milliliters. They want us to calculate the density of the gem. I know the density is equal to mass divided by volume. And to find the volume, we need to take the final volume minus the original volume, and that will tell us how much it was displaced and therefore the volume of the um, gem. So when you subtract 34 from 21, you get 13 milliliters equals your volume. So now all I have to do is plug in my mass and volume for density. So density equals 45 grams divided by 13 milliliters. And so my answer will now be in grams per milliliter, which is perfect because that's the units for density. So in my calculator, I get 3.46 and I want to look back at my sig figs. I notice that both numbers I'm given only have two sig figs, so therefore my answer should only have two sig figs since it's a division problem. So counting from the left, one, two, I'm going to draw my line. And the six tells me to round up to 3.5 grams per milliliter for my final answer. All right, our last problem is converting degrees Celsius to degrees Fahrenheit. 
So um, the first thing we need to do is to write out our equation for conversion and to go from Celsius to Fahrenheit, you would take 1.8 times whatever your temperature is in Celsius plus 32. So I'm just going to fill in 1.8 times 20, which is my degree Celsius, plus 32. 1.8 times 20 is 36, plus 32 gives me 68. Do not forget degrees Fahrenheit. It's important that you get your unit in there. And I'm going to go back and just double check. Now remember with temperature conversions, we treat them like addition problems. So your answer cannot have more decimals than what your original temperature had. So my original temperature was 20 degrees, no decimals, so therefore my answer can't have any decimals. If I were to work backwards, and I'm just gonna show you this on this problem, um, if I were to go to temperature in degrees Celsius, it would be your temperature in Fahrenheit minus 32 divided by 1.8. You really only need to know one of these equations and then be able to solve for either temperature in Fahrenheit or temperature in degrees Celsius. But working the problem, I'm starting out with 68 degrees Fahrenheit minus 32 divided by 1.8 and um, my answer is going to give me 20 degrees Celsius. So you want to make sure that because we started out with a temperature with no decimals, we end with a temperature with no decimals as well.